In this video, we are going to be covering the topics in chapter 13, which the title is Nucleic Acid Biotechnology Techniques. First, we're going to be looking at purification and detection of nucleic acids. So even though the book discusses purification, we're mainly going to be focusing on detection techniques. When it comes to nucleic acid research, understand that we are going to be working with small amounts of material. How small? Typically, we are going to be working in the one microgram range. For those of you that are numerically inclined, that means that we have 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, then a 1. So that's how small of material we need. The first technique that we are going to be looking at is gel electrophoresis. This technique is based on the motion of charged particles in an electric field. So when we're doing gel electrophoresis, understand that we're going to have a mixture of DNA molecules that have different sizes be applied to what is called the loading zone of a gel. The gel in gel electrophoresis is made out of agarose. And agarose is a polymer that is made out of carbohydrates. This gel is sitting in glass plates or in a container, okay? And this is not going to be just gel. It actually has or is sitting in a buffer solution. So in gel electrophoresis, we are going to apply a current to our gel that is sitting in the buffer solution and we already have our samples loaded in. Once this current has been applied, as you can see, this is going to separate sample by size and they're going to look like bands. After the experiment has been completed, understand that when we look at overall, we are going to have the longer molecules towards the top of the, uh, the gel, which means that these are going to be the larger molecules. And towards the bottom of the gel, we're going to have the shorter, or in other words, the smaller molecules. Once we're done with gel electrophoresis, we need to find ways in which we can visualize nucleic acids. So there are two specific techniques that we are going to be covering when it comes to visualize DNA. The first one is autoradiography with P32. P32 refers to an isotope of the element phosphorus. And when we are radio labeling our DNA with phosphorus 32, understand that first, we're going to be growing bacteria with P32 labeled nucleotides. What this means is that <clears throat> we are going to allow this bacteria to undergo DNA replication And when this DNA is synthesized, now the three prime to five prime backbone is going to have this P32 phosphorus present, okay? Then we're going to be isolating DNA after the isolation of DNA, understand that then we're going to do a gel electrophoresis.
And in gel electrophoresis is where we start in the top figure that we have on the slide. After gel electrophoresis happens, understand that these radio-labeled uh, DNA molecules are not going to be visible yet. So if we put a photographic film then what is going to happen is that that film is going to turn black when it's exposed to those radioactive DNA. So in autoradiography, what we're going to have is that the film then is going to show the bands of the DNA, and that's going to be compared to a standard. Now, understand that one of the challenges for autoradiography is that you're working with radioactive material. Radioactive material can be costly, and more importantly, when you're trying to dispose of the waste, they will charge you more and it's not environmentally friendly. So other techniques have been developed in order to be more friendly, costly, and to the environment. And those include luminescent and fluorescent methods. These methods are going to be detecting DNA by emitting light. Now, when we are doing a luminescent or fluorescent method, understand that we're going to do some of the similar steps. First, we're going to grow bacteria. Second of all, we're going to allow the bacteria to make DNA. Then we're going to isolate that DNA. We are also going to do a gel electrophoresis. And at the step of gel electrophoresis, understand that that's where we're going to place these molecules that are going to allow us to detect, in this case, DNA by visualizing it because it's going to emit light. Specifically, I'm going to mention this molecule that it is abbreviated ETBR. ETBR stands for ethidium. Bromide. And ethidium bromide is added at the level of gel electrophoresis It is added to the gel and the buffer solution. So how ethidium bromide works is that it's known to be a DNA intercalator. What that means is that ethidium bromide is going to sit in between the base pairs and depending on the amount of DNA that you have in there, then it's going to be more ethidium bromide or less ethidium bromide incorporated. More importantly, once you, have, you are done with your gel electrophoresis at the end of the gel, you take your gel and you expose it to UV light. And what happens is that ethidium bromide is going to emit an orange light. And that's how you can visualize the DNA.